adding calories back in slowly immediately after is not necessarily going to help them. It's just going to, yeah, it's gonna prevent some fat gain. You might think and you might see people on the internet, people on in, on Instagram, and they have these pictures and they're transformation picture, pictures. They are eating 2,500 calories a day or something like that. And you're like, how does that happen? How do you just eat 1,500 extra calories and look better? How does that happen? I wanna do that, sign me up right now. guys and welcome back to another video. I know that the last video is in the same exact location, but if Whitney Simmons can do it, then so can I. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about reverse dieting. So if you guys saw my last video, you'll know that that is what I'm starting to do now and I've been talking about it for a while. And this is something that I did two different ways in the past. So this is my third round going about like a reverse diet. And previously, my first time doing it, I did it very strictly and perfectly. I was completely on point. I did everything really diligently. And I did it like the, the right way, kinda, and I'll explain a little bit. The second time that I did it was last year, which you guys might have saw, was when I just didn't even do it at all. And I just ate all the food. And I just, yeah, it wasn't really a reverse diet. It was just kind of like a, let me eat everything all the time. So that being said, this time around it's gonna be different. I'm going to be doing it pretty diligently and I'm in a really great place where I can do that and I have a little bit more knowledge about it now and that's something that I wanna share with you guys. So this video is for you if you are either coming off of a really long diet like myself, you are just finishing up a contest preparation or you've been restricting calories for a really long time and you've just been in a constant state of let me eat less than I need so I can hopefully lose weight and you feel like you've been doing so much cardio, you've been eating so little and you're just really struggling to make Make progress this video is for you so first question we're going to talk about is what is reverse dieting so reverse dieting is basically just adding calories back into your caloric intake so it's the reverse of a diet where you slowly take away calories from your caloric intake and there are a couple reasons why people do it there's three main things so the first reason is so people can prevent rapid fat gain after a long diet dieting phase because you worked so hard and you want to maintain what you worked really hard for second reason is to prevent overeating and to prevent binge eating so after a long dieting phase you're so food focused and all you want to do is eat and you're really hungry and adding calories back in immediately can help suppress a little bit of that third reason is to build up your metabolic capacity which is what I want to do and I want to do all three of these things but that's the main reason for me in this video we're also going to talk about three of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to reverse dieting what it is and what it isn't so let's dive right into a couple of those the first misconception is to reverse diet or to not reverse diet so I think it was a year ago or so where Eric Helms Jeff Nipper and Lane Norton I forget who the last person was but I'm going to link that podcast and video below I've linked it below before but there was a big misconception of whether or not reverse diet dieting is worth it to even do and whether or not you should just jump right up to maintenance calories and reverse diet dieting has no what's the word I'm looking for credibility I think that's the word I'm looking for if you know what the word is let me know but that's the real question here the answer to that question is that there isn't really a right answer without any context backing it up so in that video the reverse dieting debate what I got out of it is that when you're doing a contest prep and when you've been dieting really, really low calorie for a long period of time, you start to feel effects of it in your hormones, you start to feel effects of it in your body, in your mind, and the most important thing that you need to do after a long caloric deficit that was really intense is to recover really quickly. The thing that I got out of it was that for those people who are just coming out of a contest prep and they may be really, really lean and really, really shredded, those people don't necessarily need to add back in 50 calories a week or whatever they need to get back up to where their body is working normally and functioning normally so for that reason in that piece of context that the period of time between when someone who's ending a contest prep and starting to add calories back in is much shorter and they have to get back up to their maintenance much more quickly so for those people getting right back up to a maintenance level is really more important for them and adding calories back in slowly immediately after is not necessarily going to help them it's just going to yeah it's going to prevent some fat gain but it's going to actually prolong the caloric deficit if you've been in the caloric deficit so for example my calories got up down to like 1100 last year if i went to like 
750 and 1200 <laughs> it wouldn't really be beneficial for me i would have had to get to a higher intake daily to get my hormone levels back up to normal but for some people, and if you're not just coming out of a contest prep, and if you're that person that's like me and you're coming out of a dieting phase, yes, you should also get back up to maintenance, but the gap might not be as large, if you know what I mean. So my gap now isn't really between like where I am currently at or where I was at, like the end of my dieting calories, the gap between there and my estimated new maintenance calories wasn't as big as it was when I was dieting down here. That's the only probably difference between someone who's just coming out of a prep and someone who's just coming out of a long diet but wasn't that intense with the diet, which is where I'm kind of at. The second misconception is that you can just jump right back up to maintenance and be completely fine. Great, sign me up. The biggest thing with that is actually that your maintenance calorie level from when you started is now lower after you finish your diet for a couple of reasons. So maybe you start your diet and your maintenance is 2000 calories and you weigh 200 pounds. When you diet, you end up at 185 pounds. So because you, you weigh less, your body requires less energy, you're dieting, so you're probably more tired, you're more fatigued, you're moving around less, you're fidgeting less. Your new maintenance calorie level isn't 2000 anymore after the end of your diet. It's probably, maybe it's around, like 1800 or 1750 or something like that. Okay, so my other camera died, so this might look a little bit different, but we're gonna talk about the same thing. <laughs> so the biggest difference between the maintenance level thing is that you have to be aware of is whether or not you're jumping up to a surplus or you're jumping up to maintenance calories. So if you're jumping up to maintenance calories and you are aware of what those maintenance calories are, which really comes from just being aware of how much you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis, especially in your cut. So if you're paying attention to your calorie intake, you'll be able to determine that, and I'll tell you how to do that in a sec. But if you're paying attention to that, and you jump right up to maintenance, you will maintain your weight. That's what that means. <laughs> and you just won't be in a deficit anymore, and you won't be able to lose weight, but you'll be maintaining what you look like, and that will happen for you. So yes, you could jump right back up to maintenance, but just be aware of what that maintenance is for yourself. <laughs> so number three biggest misconception is that you can just reverse diet and not gain any fat. Great, sign me up. And you might be thinking that because you might think and you might see people on the internet, people on in, on Instagram, and they have these pictures and they're transformation picture, pictures. The picture on the left is when they're maybe skinny fat, maybe they don't have too much muscle on them, or maybe they have like a good amount of fat on them, and they're eating 1100 calories a day, and they don't look that great. And then on the right, there's they look really full, they look really lean, they look really athletic, and they are eating 2500 calories a day or something like that. And you're like, how does that happen? How do you just eat 1500 extra calories and look better? How does that happen? I wanna do that, sign me up right now. I want to make you guys aware of the fact that this is not always the case. This is a couple of different reasons why this happens. Number one is that they might just be under eating so much at that previous point that when they start eating more, they're potentially happier, healthier, lower stress. So fat burning hormones start to kind of turn on again and their cortisol levels go down so their body's able to function better and their body's able to be like, oh great. I can lose fat now, like I'm not starving, I'm not dying. They're also probably pushing more weight, they're probably training harder, training heavier, putting on some more muscle, and they're probably increasing their NEAT, which means that they're probably like fidgeting more and moving more and just happier and they're not as bleh as you are when you're dieting. What that could mean is that it's actually having a really great effect on their body and they are getting leaner and they are putting on muscle and it's all just happening and working in this most amazing symbiotic way that I hope happens to me and I hope happens for everybody. Number two is that these people are probably pretty diligent on their reverse diets. It's really easy to have freedom of a reverse diet. It's really easy to not be handcuffed by your deficit anymore, not be handcuffed by your prep anymore, and you have all this freedom. So you're like, I could eat right around my calories or whatever, and like estimate, and estimating is great, and I encourage everyone to do it. I encourage everyone to eventually be able to intuitively eat, that's what I want for myself as well. But you might be kind of jumping a little bit past that maintenance level again, and you might just be getting yourself into a surplus more quickly if you're not being as diligent on your reverse diet. And number three, a reason why you might see these people on Instagram is that they might be the genetically elite people who are able to do that and they're able to have a really high metabolic ceiling that they just never knew about before. <laughs> and I've seen people like that, I know people like that, one of my clients is like that, 
and it's really awesome but just be aware that that might not happen for everybody and it depends on how you execute it and it depends on where your current body is at as well so now that we covered those misconceptions I'm gonna talk about what to actually do when you start a reverse diet if you're someone just coming out of a contest prep I recommend to take like a week or a week and a half or so at your new estimated maintenance macros and see what happens keep them steady evaluate if that is in fact your maintenance and eat enjoy yourself allow your body to maybe gain that little extra fat that you lost for stage but you still look really lean and I know it's really one of those like body dysmorphia things that happens when you compete but adding that little bit of extra fat that's necessary for your body's functions to start happening again in the most effective way and most efficient way that little extra fat is going to come from eating a little bit more than usual for sure and for everybody else and for those who are contest prepping add calories at a rate between 50 and 150 calories a week and I've seen different numbers for this but this is what I've seen most effective between 50 to 100 calories so 50 calories could mean 10 grams of carbs it can mean 5 grams of fat 10 could be 40 so anyone who corrects me on that math I understand that 10 grams of carbs is 40 calories but estimating you know 11 or so whatever and it could be a combination between carbs and fat or whatever but if you do anything less than that it's not really going to benefit you that much like you could add 25 calories a week or 50 calories every two weeks but 25 calories is like I said in my last video a gulp of air so if you're doing the 50 calories that maybe means that you're one of those people that struggles to lose body fat like myself it might be a little bit easier for you to put on weight so keeping them at that lower range is might might be a better idea and if you're one of those people that struggles to put on muscle maybe keeping them at the higher range 150 maybe 200 calories every time you increase calories that might be a good idea for you and when it comes to the rate at which you increase calories, it's not necessary to do it every single week. It really depends on how your body reacts. It's one of those individual things. So if your body is reacting by maintaining weight every single week and your, your weight stays the same, go ahead and add calories. If you're losing weight, add a little bit more calories. If you're gaining weight, maybe hold off that week. And I remember specifically when I did this, I felt it in my body that it was like ready to have more because my body was maintaining. I didn't really feel like I was getting, I was gaining body fat too quickly. I felt, I felt it. It's weird, it's a feeling, but you feel it. <laughs> and it, the feeling you get is when your body adapts to that new calories. Like we always talk about, I talk about this all the time, the adapting thing, your body adapts and it, is allowing you to be like okay it, you can have more now and I will still maintain my weight because I have adapted like I've gone up here I've met you where you're at and then you can go back up a little bit and I'll meet you where you're at again you can go up again I'll meet you where you're at again and again dependent on where you are your body might take anywhere between two to three weeks maybe even one to adapt to your new calorie intake that you've added that week and last thing when do you know when to stop and when to stop is really dependent again on the individual and don't be annoyed but it's so true that every single person has some sort of metabolic ceiling that they hit that they can maintain their weight and then all of a sudden they hit their metabolic ceiling which is like the amount of calories that you can consume until you start gaining a little bit excess body fat so if you do this right you can get your to a really high level but for me I will never do this long enough where I could eat 5,000 calories a day. My body's just not big enough. <laughs> I'm not that big of a person where I'm going to need that many calories in order to maintain my weight, but I can get it up to a, a level that's good for me and something that's good for you too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really loved doing it. This is something that I've been wanting to talk about with you guys for a really long time and I'm excited to show you how I'm doing it as we move on in this phase two of Project Me. So give the video a thumbs up, share it with a friend who you think might need it, and I will catch you guys in the next one.